Welcome back to another Prairie Sunset Ranch Farm vlog. I'm Aaron the Beef Baron. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, my friends. Well, Aaron, why the heck do you cab out in the winter? It's too damn cold. Are you crazy? I might be. I might be loco. <laughs> I'm going to explain why we cab out in this weather, the benefits of it to us. And three, we're just going to touch base on some signs that... Uh, when you are winter calving, some signs to look for in a cow that uh, that is getting ready to uh, birth a calf. So we're just going to touch base on that briefly. It got cold here. It's back in the minus 25 to minus 30 range. So it got chilly. It went from plus 2 to minus 35. What can I say? That's a big loop, big dip, big spike. Call it what you want. It sucks. <laughs> We are also going to try to get the calves to go into their alley for their alfalfa pellets. We're using some old oats just because I don't want to feed up the alfalfa pellets until all of them are indeed going into the alleys because those alfalfa pellets cost me a fair chunk of coin. <laughs> Aaron also bought himself a new toy. I got rid of those Yamaha Nitro snowmobiles. They were driving me nuts. So they're gone. Out with the old, in with the new. I got myself a new shiny. Well, it's a new to me. It's not brand new, but I like it. I think it's pretty freaking mint. So we're going to check out what I got. You might like it. You might not. It's orange and fast, and it is very comfortable for my big badonkadonk. So there you go. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough chit chat here. Let's bitter, better, and get at her. Woo! Well, I'm just grabbing the heifer. Uh, we're gonna feed them up three bales and uh, we're gonna bed their pole barn there. The weather's supposed to get really cool out. It has cooled off probably about 20 degrees here. It went basically from zero uh, to minus 27 in a matter of a day. So that's how it goes out here. But uh, I noticed the heifers are a little bit bloated there. <laughs> the last uh, feed up so we're gonna give them some poor hay i don't know if i'm gonna give them that one that one's pretty damn poor that's more of a bedding bale but uh we're gonna give them some slew and a couple wild bales nothing crazy because uh yeah i don't want them blimped out you can get in a lot of trouble overfeeding heifers before calving that's for sure ask me how i know that <laughs> probably going to give them a little bit of alfalfa pellets later if not today tomorrow morning but uh, yeah, with the heifers, we closely monitor what and, and how we feed the heifers because that can cause major problems for you. If the calf gets a little big, you are in trouble. You're in for possibly a world of hurt unless you got a <coughs> real good heifer. So it just very, it really depends on, on the year you have and how much you're eating. Like right now they're eating like crazy. So if I put three good bales out there, they're gonna eat all three bales. Now, the surprising thing with these heifers are they're actually consuming more than last year's heifers. Um, I don't know if it was milder out last year. I can't recollect, but it may have been. But for the most part, this year's been pretty pretty nice. It's been above normal here. Um, for, for, there's been more days above normal than below. Let's put it that way. Now, listen to little Timmy here. Timmy told me, if you like Prairie Sunset Ranch Farm videos, what did you tell us? Remember, hit that thumbs up and that like button. Booyah. Now I'm gonna be pulling the calves out here before Christmas. I'm gonna pull the calves out, get them to the calf lot. Uh, we're still struggling at training the calves to go into the uh, alley for alfalfa pellets. This is the worst year I remember for that. I don't know why. I, I, well, I kind of know why. I believe the reason for that being, or is being, the fact that the calves are a little bit older than they were last year. And even those few weeks, they came back a little later this year because we had a little bit of late pasture growth and we didn't have the hay. So we left them out a little later than usual. So when they're younger, they're a little easier to train, just like anything else, right? So. I'm gonna grab uh, two more bales. I'm gonna go grab a bedding bale and one more feed up bale. I wanna talk a little bit about why we winter calve. I actually had a subscriber reach out to me. Uh, they messaged me, they're, they're talking about calving out. And they said, well, if your weather's so, um, you know, can be so harsh out there in the winter, it can go get so damn cold, like 40 below, 45 below, 30 below, 35. 30 below, minus 30 Celsius is quite normal for winter, for winter temp out here. 
So he was asking, why the heck are you calving out there? Why do you complain about it? Then if you do it, you can just calve out in the summer or the spring. Well, I'll talk a little bit about that now. Spring and summer calving isn't all roses. I'll tell you that much. For the heifers here, heifers, as you know, lamb out this side of the dairy barn. Lambs, uh, the sheep lamb out on the other side. We try to do them around the same time. So they both get locked in the barn there. Lots of heat, it stays real warm. We got heat lamps down the middle. It's, it's nice, it works out really well. But I'm gonna do something a little different this year. These calves gotta move out. They're big enough already. Uh, they're younger than the other cows. That's why I'm not in a huge rush, but they gotta go out. But I'm gonna utilize, as you can see, I try to move the feeders, spread them out. This is very limited space. So even for this amount of animals, it's a good space. But what I'm gonna do is after calving, once they calve in this area, I got a swing gate there and they're gonna go into that side of the pasture. I shut it off from the sheep. So they're gonna have up to those bales a nice new clean area. So what I'm hoping is with that nice new clean area, it hasn't been used for a while, um, we can have the new calves and their mothers on that side. There won't be any confusion with calves. Everything will be tagged, rung, ready to go, uh, health checks done. And they can go into that side and hopefully there won't be health issues. It's pretty high and dry there, even if it's wet, lots of dry, dry area over there. So that's kind of the plan this year for the heifers. And then next year we're pan well planning, hopefully to keep more over to grow the herd a little bit depending on how the hay goes this year. Let's just touch base on why we uh, here at Prairie Sunset Ranch, why we calve out in the winter. Yes, this is a very harsh environment. It's always changing. It can go from zero plus one to minus 40 overnight, literally. It's very crazy here. Hi, wanna say something to the crowd? Hi. <laughs> Anyways, with that said, I had someone reach out to me. I subscribed and they're like, well, well, why are, you, why are you doing it in the winter? Why are you calving out in the winter? Are you nuts? I'll tell you why. It wasn't always done like that here at the farm. My father, when I was a youngster, he actually calved out on that side in the spring and early summer. Um, so be it, those few years, I think, I think he calved out like that for two, three years. Those two, three years happened to be very wet years, warm and wet. So you had some slush, you had puddles, you had lots of icky water around. As you know, when there is dirty standing water around in a cattle corral, it can be very dangerous to your, your herd's um, uh, health, right? Especially calves, calves, scours, you name it, uh, it, it can hit them. Just think of all the germs and bacteria hanging out. They got their Hawaiian shirts on. They got their all inclusive bracelets on. They're hammering back drinks and saying like, hey, who are we gonna screw up? Well, they're gonna screw up our cattle herd. They're gonna, they're gonna mess with your calves. <laughs> That's how I think of it. That's why we don't calve out in the spring or we do calve out early spring. It catches the tail end of it, which is fine. But the, the vast majority, the majority of our calving is done by spring. Um, you don't need a heated barn. You just need a, a, a structure with a roof and walls where you can put animals in and they create enough warmth to, to stay warm in there when they give birth. And you have to keep it clean. You constantly have to be cleaning and bedding. Bottom line, there's no way around it. It's a lot more labor. But the reason, the main reason we do this in the winter is it's cleaner. It's cleaner, it's a cleaner environment. The bacteria isn't flourishing. There isn't as much threat from bacteria. Yeah, you're still gonna have issues. You can have scours, etc. I'm not saying it's eliminating it, but it's decreasing it. It's greatly decreasing your chances of your calf getting an ail ailment or illness. When you do calve in the winter, that calf <clears throat> will suckle the mother more often to stay warm it will uh, be a natural instinct. It will drink more colostrum and more milk from the mother. It will get more antibodies. It will stay um, more full. Um, it will basically nurse more often, which is a bonus for you as a cattle producer. Every time a newborn calf nurses, it's getting some of those mother's antibodies. It's, pick, it's picking up its immune system, strengthening. Um, it's, it's got natural, natural uh, antibodies in it from the colostrum milk. So it's a win-win situation. So what we find is uh, when you've got these calves 
uh, dropping in this cooler weather. We, you got to catch them though. You got to catch them. You got to know which ones are calving. <laughs> but uh, if you can do that, if you can pull that off, you got a big healthy calf come spring, come time to put them out in pasture. You're going to have a nice uh, healthy herd of, of calves for sure. Um, but it's not easy. It's not for a beginner. If you're going to be calving out in the winter, depending on your setup, everyone's setup is different. For us, I didn't just start calving out in the winter. I slowly worked into it. I was lambing out our sheep and uh, my father, I spent a lot of time with my dad. My father showed me signs to look for, for, for when a calf or a cow is going to calf. There are certain signs that are dead giveaways. Basically, the first sign would be this girl, her stomach is going to drop. Her stomach is actually going to drop down a little bit, right? Second, the uh, milk bag. Her milk bag is going to fill up. Does that mean she's going to calve right away? No, that means she's, she's, she's amping up. She's producing milk. And I would like to note when this happens, these girls got to get fed better than they have been prior. Right now, like they got a nice bale there, two poor bales there, but they eat it all up. You can tell they're all looking well. But their nutritional demands are up. They're producing milk. And you know, that's the start. You know, there's calves on their way. Now the third, third thing, the udders, those udders will harden up. They will fill out and they won't look soft and flaccid. They will fill up with milk. When those udders get stiff or firm looking, you watch that animal. What I, what I do is I bring them in to the front there and they get locked up. They get locked up all together. So anything that looks like this is gonna calve gets locked up together. If there isn't enough, I take the ones that look closest because you want, for us, I like to put 15, 20 animals in there at once, uh, lock it off, block off the front at night and it really maintains warmth well. So if you have a calf at night, you go there, that calf, nine times out of 10 nursed, is dry, is happy and healthy. So it works out pretty good, but we do bed heavy. And they can get a mucus discharge uh, hours or days before calving. Um, you know, they'll get a clear discharge. And needless to say, <laughs> the closer they get to calving, the looser the behind gets. Um, hey, girl. I don't want to shock her. Hey, girl. Hi. But she'll get very loose from behind. Uh, rather than, uh, it'll be almost tented down and she'll get really puffy from behind. So uh, the nursing, the uh, birth cavity, I'll call it, will get really poofy. And you put everything together. You put all the, the pieces of the puzzle together and you, you will, you'll know when that cow, or that you know that cow's gonna be calving. You know it's imminent. Um, I'll be going over that later on when we get closer to it. But that's basically what we look for and how we winter calve. I'm going to check the calves, maybe try to give them some uh, alfalfa pellets. But uh, let's get going here. We've got lots to do. Well, I'm going to try again. I want to get these uh, leader cows out of here, but I can't until the calves know how to come into this alley. <laughs> this is quite a process this year. Coming. I don't want to put too much. I want to. I don't want to give the alfalfa pellets yet until I got them trained because they're they cost a fair chunk of coin. So I want to make sure they're all consuming it. Yeah, I've never had this problem. They're not catching on this year. I don't know what's going on. Crazy. Only got about five in. <clears throat> Never had this problem. Just try to give them a little push. Let's 
Stop, stop. in there. Try this again Rich. We'll come from this end, try to push them in. Funny this year is a different group of uh, calves. I guess they're in pasture a little longer, a little more skittish. That's all I can write it off to. This is twice as hard as it's been in the last uh, three four years. Usually I don't have an issue, usually it takes five days. Well, I've been working with them for a couple weeks already. So, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I don't want to rush them and get hurt. Let them go slow. Alright, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Okay, you gotta be on this side, the feeder. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Perfect. Keep the pressure on. A little bit more. Let's go. Yep. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, I want to scare him. That was okay. Okay, we got majority of them in. Go in now. Majority in. Stop that guy. Yeah. Awesome. Let's go. Take pressure. Come up behind them. Three more. All right, that'll be it for the day. So that's better. We only got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 13, 14, 16 not in. Rest are in. We're getting some goodies, so that's good. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow we're going better. We'll try it. Well, here you have it, people. You all know how much I kind of had a love-hate relationship with those Yamaha Nitros. Anyways, I got rid of it. It left me stranded. I was with a uh, little cowboy Hoyt, we're out ripping. He had his little mini snowmobile, I had mine, and it died. April had to pull me back for the fourth time this year for, got rid of them, sold them both. As is, pick up this girl. What do you think? Already cat. XF 1100. Why ride blue when you can ride orange? There's my new baby. Arctic Cat XF 1100. It's not the turbo, it's the naturally aspirated. I did not want a turbo. I did not want to be pulling wrenches. I wanted just a, a turn the key and go machine. So I hope that's the key. 
I hope that works out like that. That's how my nitros are supposed to be. I did have some work done to it though. The uh, coolant tank had a little uh, weep at the seam. So I patched that up and uh, added some uh, chain case oil. I changed the oil on it and spark plugs and it's good to go. Runs good, runs good so far. So hopefully this brings me some good uh, trouble free miles. Nice looking machine, definitely comfortable. Should do the trick. Let me know what you think of this machine. If you know anything about them, I know nothing. I kind of bought it on a whim just because I like the looks of the ride of it. But then I've read that the motor is supposed to be pretty darn good. So hope I'm right. Well, that's a wrap. I am cold. I am hitting in. So this is Aaron throwing in the towel. We will catch you next weekend with an all new Prairie Sunset Ranch Farm vlog. Be there or be square, my friends. Bye for now. Have a great week.